Make sure all your audio is coming through. Afternoon everybody, Charlie here from Quoll, Head of Professional Services, and today we are joined by Ed from Sonic Wall, who's going to tell us everything and anything there is to know about Sonic Wall and kind of all the all the ransomware kind of technologies they're using to get through today's pandemics that are out there in the big wide world. Um, Ed, I hand it over to you. Um, but please just give us the the rundown of Sonic Wall and what we um what we've got to look forward to. Thanks, Charlie. Afternoon, everyone. Um, so you know, we don't want to uh, go into too much detail on this on a Friday afternoon, but let's let's try and keep it high level. Um, yep. so Sonic Wall. Most people in the IT world have heard of Sonic Wall, and they can tell me that yeah, we know what you do. Um, Sonic Wall have been around for 28 years, and um, we started in the world making firewalls and been very successful in the sort of SMB market sector. Um, and that's what everyone will tell you Sonic Wall does, and they know everything. And, if I was to agree with that, yeah, I'd say you're not wrong, but that was probably Sonic Wall five, ten years ago. We, we've come a long way, and, and like a lot of people, we would consider ourselves um, now as a cybersecurity vendor. Um, and the reason for that is that, you know, obviously as, as cybersecurity has evolved, as basically the sort of attacks we're getting have, have evolved, as has our technological infrastructures that, that people are deploying. So, yeah. 10 years ago, you had some antivirus and a firewall on a site and everyone was, was, was happy and that was you know, pretty much what you wanted for security. Um, and we would have always probably suggested back then as security professionals, and Charlie probably would keep me honest here, that the best <laughs> is to have a couple of different vendors or three or four different vendors because if Sonic will miss something, then the cafe will catch it or, or whatever it might be. Um, and you know, we've been happily doing that for a number of years, as have a lot of security professionals. And if I'm honest with you, it sort of got us to, to where we are today, which is a little bit of a muddle in terms of security, because there's a lot of customers out there um, with a lot of different technologies, um, and they're all doing their own little point solution. And perhaps now we need to sort of take a step back and look at what is a security solution, because if you've got seven different security vendors in your network that you're looking to patch and maintain and keep people trained on, I would suggest that's going to be pretty much impossible. And, and the amount of people that you go in and speak to and, and they say, oh, what's, what's that box in the corner? And we don't know what it does, but it's, it seems to be working, so we'll just leave it. Um, and that's probably not the most, most secure way to be running a, a company, um, but it's that kind of mentality, which, you know, the security industry, we'll put our hands up and say, we kind of got you there. Um, mainly because of the organic nature of how security has grown over the last 15 years. Um, you know, Sonic Wall have been around for 28 years. It's great because we've got, therefore, a lot of data. We've seen a lot of bad stuff. And so what we've done and what we've been really busy doing over the last three years, I'd say, since we sort of exited from our friends over at Dell, is we've been developing other technologies to fill sort of areas where perhaps we didn't have a solution, for example, on the endpoint um, or ground cloud services, but then more importantly, bringing them down under a sort of single pane of glass. Um, so we've got a centralized management platform so you can see all the threats tunneling up and it doesn't matter whether the threat attacks you on the laptop when you're over in McDonald's on the Wi-Fi back when you're allowed to go there or whether you're in the office behind the firewall, it's the same threat, the same report, come to the same alert. Um, and we will then give you the same level of protection using our, our sandboxing, our cloud-based capture ATP solution, um, which effectively is, is looking at that percentage of threats that, that uh, are, are unknown. And I think it's uh, Donald Rumsvold who said, uh, it's, it's the unknown unknown that we're looking at. It's, it's, it's the stuff that we don't even know about. It's the, no one was looking for 9-11 before 9-11, Mm. No one actually contemplated that someone would hijack a plane and fly it into a building. After 9-11, everyone's looking for that. <laughs> That's where we've got to look from a cyber perspective and where we're really looking at it. Um, if you hear anything from our CEO, Bill Connor, he always sort of says, you know, 99%, if you were doing a maths test and, and you got 99%, you'd be pretty happy. In security, if, if we catch a 99% of threats, that 1% that we missed, that's what's going to get you. 
Um, and so, so we've done a lot of work, a lot of research and development in, in focusing on that 1%, um, because I reckon most security companies are pretty good at getting hold of the 99%. We're focusing on the 1% and potentially even more so the 1% of that 1%, which you're probably sitting there going, Ed, why are you doing that? Because if you look at that in a number, we're still talking in terms of millions of um, malware files. Mm. It's an insignificant number. So yes, in percentage terms, it sounds small, but actually it's, it's a huge amount of uh, volume out there. So we've sort of done that, but, but we've sewn it together with um, multiple vendor um, solutions rather in, in a single vendor solution, but with, with multiple mm. um, vectors. Mm. Um, uh, uh, I know the word, I know the kind of the phrase now in the industry is kind of like the zero day attack. Is that kind of, is that kind of the still sort of the 1%? Is that kind of what they... Yeah, that's um, the, the zero day attack is, is the attack that, yeah, that no one's seen before. Um, and there's sort of two, two ways. There's, there's the real zero day attack that's, uh, that's not been seen before, as in it's a completely new way of attacking something, which are relatively rare. But there's the other zero day attack, which is something like a bit of malware. So let's say it's ransomware. But you can easily morph it from a known signature. So for tr traditional antivirus and, and gateway antivirus and things like that, you have a list of known bad stuff. And we go, yeah, we know that's bad. Um, and we'll write a little thing that says, if that comes to the network, like a bouncer, you're not on the list, you, you know, you, you're not coming in. Um, but it's very easy to tame, change that from known to unknown by, just by changing the way that looks. Um, and malware these days will, will actually morph as it makes its way through its net, through a network as well. So we've had to... You know, keep up with that as an organisation. So now, in terms of looking at malware and, and unknown threats, we're looking at behaviour. We're looking at how an artifact or how a file behaves, um, rather than have we seen it before. Mm -hmm. And if it behaves like malware, it probably is malware. <laughs> it's, it's it's something you should think. Well, we should have thought of that before. Um, again, to go back to our long pedigree. We, we've been doing you know, machine learning, which effectively what this is, and some people call it artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. we, um, machine learning but we've been doing it for 15 years plus so we've got loads of data and we know how to, how to do this stuff um, and like anything same as machine learning human learning the amount of information you can throw at something is how much it can learn um, it's, it's not intelligent as such it's, it's just how much you can learn so if you, we've got hundreds of terabytes of data we can get ahead of that game and we know what various malwares will do what they look like how they behave and we can then use that <coughs> And then we couple it with our, our real-time deep memory inspection, our TDMI, a bit of a mouthful for a Friday afternoon, <laughs> with our sandbox, and we can have a whole session on that. But that's sort of where we're really looking at the tying down. So in terms of threat prevention, you know, we are really right out there at the, at the cutting edge, and you know, I'm happy to say we'll, we'll go sort of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, which is great, but that doesn't work if you haven't got that rounded solution, because... You need to make sure everything's patched and you need to make sure things are configured correctly. And, and if I change a policy on my firewall, does it affect something I need to do on my endpoint, et cetera? So we, we, that, that threat level of threat prevention coupled in with our, um, our boundless technology story that we, we call it, which is effectively this, we don't care what you're using, where the threat's coming from in the explosion of endpoints, none, none more so than in today's environment in the world that we now live in where everyone's working remotely and disparately. Um, whether you're on your mobile phone, your laptop, we'll give you that same level of protection. And then from, a, from an IT administration point of view, you can look at it all back from one single um, management console, you can make the changes, you can look at the alerts, you can see the reporting. Um, and so we really sort of developed that out, um, that story. And, and then the next thing, which obviously we, we have to look at is cloud. Um, I don't know how, how do you, how have you seen sort of cloud adoption over at Quoll, Charlie? Yeah, so it's kind of, um, I mean, the, 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 the word cloud gets thrown around left, right and centre. It's the new buzzword in the, um, in the IT industry for sure. Um, some people are adopting it, some people aren't adop adopting it, um, and some people are going sort of half and half. So some people are kind of putting some services in like email or data um, and other kind of keeping some of their kind of, their kind of old school sort of safe database and things locally because they don't really work too well in the cloud and vice versa. Um, but no, it's um, a lot more things are becoming sort of more cloud resilient and backups and things like that are now becoming more cloud orientated. Um, and as like you said, it's now becoming a, a not a industry standard, but things are now more 
um, are more geared up to the cloud. So a lot more services now have got cloud added add-ons or cloud they can integrate into the cloud services that everybody's kind of running with. Um, so it's becoming more of a, a more of a standard than it would be to not be in the cloud. Um, and I think a lot of a lot of businesses are getting involved. Um, it's just. Um, some are just taking long enough, just depending on kind of their, their state at the moment and whether their kind of company and kind of GDPR rules and kind of what the clients with and whether they can go into the cloud and whether they can be in the UK or they can be in the EU and you know so many caveats into yeah. whether they can do that or not. But it's, they are getting there. No, they are getting there. It's, 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 it's pretty much. Problem. Yeah, I, I, I just say <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a bit of a minefield. And to be honest with you, from a security point of view. You know, if we put our security hats on, you're probably not old enough, Charlie. And went back and, <laughs> and, and pretty much, you know, as a security guy in the room, your job was to say, no, we're not doing that. We're not. I remember when iPhones came out and then everyone had Blackberries back then and they, and they go, we, we all want iPhones. And the security guy, said, no, we're not having iPhones. And clearly that worked out well for us security guys because nobody has an iPhone. <laughs> So, you know, we, we need to, and when cloud came, again, it's like, well, instead of instead of being the security guy in the room that says no, mm. the security guy in the room goes, okay, if we do that, we need to do this, this, and this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's where, as you've sort of touched on there, most people are looking at a hybrid environment right now, and it could just be they've gone off as 365. Interesting, a lot, a lot of those people wouldn't consider they've got a cloud solution. They haven't really even realized that they've migrated a lot of their data and everything else to the cloud. Mm. And other people have gone whole hog and put loads of servers in Azure and AWS and wherever. So again, as a business, what Sonic will have done to sort of keep up with that demand is actually, so, so from a firewall perspective, we don't care. You can have the same operating system and the same interface and the same firewall, whether you put it in AWS, whether you put it on a VMware somewhere, or whether you've got a, one of our, our hardware solutions, a small one, a big one. <laughs> it's put it where you like, and again, you can manage it from the same central map platform. So we're very much flexible around that, and people can, yeah, cloud, not cloud, both, we're, we're there. But interestingly, what the other the other product that we've spent a lot of time developing is around cloud application security. So um, this is where, let's take Office 365 as probably the biggest example of, of cloud usage, in, in certainly in the UK. I know in, in the States they love uh, G Suite and Google. Mm -hmm. Uh, but over here, Office 365 rules and, and most people that have moved over, there's a few still hanging around on-prem. So we've got a solution that will, will have, is actually a, a, an API, so it'll integrate directly into Office 365 and will scan all your emails. So when you, when you load it up, it'll look through all your historic emails, not just the email though, but your SharePoints and any files and things that have been uploaded to that on the whole Office 365 suite and look for malware. Um, because if it's in there, it's going to stay there. So, you know, I, my, uh, my friend Alexis Holmes is one of my, my SE who travels around with me back in the days when we could travel. <laughs> he has a whole load of malware. Actually, it's in the Dropbox. It's not on Office 365. And he says, they don't care what's in there. He, he keeps his malware in there for demonstration purposes only, um, but I'm not going to upset him anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's got that in there. And, and Dropbox don't care because they don't care what's in there. They don't, they're, they're, they're interested in looking after their infrastructure. The data is the responsibility of the user. So if you upload a, a, an iffy file with a bit of malware on it and then start sharing it internally through SharePoint, that's not, Office 365 are not interested in that. That's not their, not their issue. It's not a Microsoft problem. That, that's a core problem, for example, if it was you that did it. Yeah, yeah. We've got a solution that will, will look at that and it will then extract any, any files that have, um, and then flag them up if, and quarantine them if they are got malware in there. But beyond that, it's then looking at sort of, um, phishing practices. So again, with the current situation, an awful lot of people have been, you know, the, the number of phishing attacks is, is increased exponentially at the moment um, around, you know, trying to exploit people because they're working from home, because they're scared about things that are going on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but he's also, because of the potential lack of communication, because everyone's disparate, it's more the whale fishing that they're going for the CTOs and the CEOs and people like that and trying to get them to sign off a purchase order or, or pay an invoice um, by spoofing emails or by actually hacking and get, uh, taking over someone's Office 365 account. You know, that didn't used to be a problem. That's a huge problem, account takeover. Um, 
So again, we have, as part of our, our cloud application security, we will say, if you're, if you're logged in, in in London, say, and then 10 minutes later, you're trying to log in from Hong Kong, something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to block that. We're going to, we're going to alert people. And, and if we, we put this in as a, a trial into a small Scottish charity that I'd never heard of. They put it in over the weekend and they'd had 900 failed login attempts by Monday morning. Wow. Uh, all in China. <laughs> Only have UK staff. In fact, I think they're all in Scotland. Um, and some, and they were legit email addresses and they were just trying to brute force. Oh, yeah. Right. It's only going to be a matter of time before, before, before they get through. So, you know, that, in itself is an issue with Office 365, but, but back to sort of the whaling situation, we'll then look for behavioral attributes. So they'll, they'll look through Charlie's inbox and see that Charlie always signs off, cheers, Charlie. And then the day that Charlie sends the email saying, please pay this purchase order, kindest regards, Charles, our system will go, bang, that's not right. <laughs> not Charles, he's never said that and, then, and it will quarantine it. Now it could be that you've, you know, you've been told off by your mum and you <laughs> particularly want to, um, you know, get something done. And it is you, but you've got that option to then remove it from quarantine yourself, etc. But it, it's going to just pick up for those little nuances that, um, that can save people. We, we did have it once where someone nearly paid a big invoice, but someone had written, please. And they've never said please in their life. <laughs> it's got too picked up. Not got to... <laughs> picked up right in time and uh, yeah there's something like, that's not you you've never said please <laughs> so, so we're looking at really sort of next level of, of protection around you know cloud applications and again we can work that with with salesforce it can be office 365 it can be drop dropbox um, and all those 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 technologies that people are taking but they're not necessarily thinking I need to secure that. And that's the biggest thing I'd say when people are moving to cloud is look at the T's and C's, who's responsible for data, who's responsible for what. Um, and again, you know, I know Microsoft and Office 365 have a fairly comprehensive list of security features you can buy as add-ons, et cetera. Um, and I'm sure that some of them are pretty decent. Um, I think an E5 license, the top security and everything else on it, you're looking at about $50, $50 or something a month. Mm -hmm. An awful lot of money when you can get the same level of security from ours for about one pound thirty-five or one pound seventy, whatever it might be. But <laughs> two quid, it's a lot less than fifty dollars. So you know, it's it's around. You know, people just need to be a little bit more savvy, perhaps, when when going down that that cloud road um, as to to where their you know where their where the data um, responsibility lies is mm -hmm. the key there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, yeah, no, no, that's becoming a, it's becoming ownership, who owns what data and who's responsible is becoming a huge, uh, huge challenge and huge battle for everybody because everybody's now sort of scrutinizing as to who owns what data or who's responsible for that data because if they're not or if the right per company is or isn't responsible, it creates a whole world of pain. Um, yeah. Especially absolutely. when something goes wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. I know, I know that from the Microsoft world of like the, the backup and people they don't, they don't provide a backup it's just a it's not it's not a backup at all it's just some some form of you know you can recover your mailbox or deleted emails after a certain amount of time but they don't actually offer a backup solution but a lot of people think they do so it's kind of yeah. um, how they've worded it's just, it how they've, it's just around people need to go in with that with their eyes open um, yeah a little, a little bit um because not not that you know microsoft aren't trying to catch people out or anything like that or google or it's just that's not their business that's not you know they provide something for you to put your data but that doesn't mean they're gonna they're gonna look after it mm. and i think that's sort of you know just something to, to think about when when we're looking at a cloud um solution generally and, and what that data might be mm. yeah um, no, sure yeah so um how have you guys um found the current situation um, it's, it's been interesting because depending on what industry you're in, um, some are completely like uncontactable come so a lot of schools and kind of, um, obviously like healthcare, healthcare yeah. sectors and things are just, um, ab absolutely, um, uncontactable because they're just super busy and they've got like no time for anything. Um, whereas other industries are just carrying on as if normal, nothing's really happened. They've just moved their services. Um, they just move the services out of the office and they carry on and just they carry a remote they've got all kind of remote set up already working and they just carry on as normal nothing's changed um, yeah I mean, we, we found a sort of similar thing I mean, we were very very busy um, obviously when when 
things just started going a little bit south, shall we say, um, and everyone was rushing to work from, from home, uh, and suddenly they had, what, 10 days notice, if that. Um, and yeah, traditionally, I, you know, I think most people agree, maybe 20%, one-fifth of staff might have remote access to be able to work from home, on the road, whatever the sales team could be, um, maybe a couple of directors, and that was standard so you could generally run that as, as vpns off your firewall and most people you know firewalls will handle that pretty happily suddenly overnight or over a, a week period people are suddenly going oh i haven't got 20 remote workers now i've got 200 i've got 220 and half <laughs> laptops and i can't buy laptops because everyone's buying laptops yep yeah and, yeah and, and and suddenly you know we we sort of couldn't keep up with the the demand of, of just people buying DPN licenses, we suddenly had sort of 5,000 orders placed in, in a couple of days or so at the end, you know, and towards just when it was really ramping up in the UK, just trying to keep up with demand. And you know, we were doing things like obviously helping the NHS out with some sort of free licensing here and there to, to, to tide them over while they were getting, getting their ducks in a row. Um, and, and like a lot of you know, security vendors, and one thing I, I would say, you know, we were quite proud to be part of that, as Sonic Wall and as security and you know the likes of Quala as a whole, you, you see the number of IT companies who who stood up to the challenge, worked 24 hours a day, and gave a lot of free licensing out to to help people get over it. You know, especially in say keeping hospitals running and doctors get getting up and running. And you know, I, I think that uh, it's it's not often that IT people can sort of sit there and go, yeah, we, we did our bit. Yes, we weren't on the front line being doctors and nurses. But <laughs> everyone, everyone had their part to play in keeping things rolling. And now we've sort of seen that settle down. Um, and I've, I've seen a real shift in people's mentality towards going back to the office. And actually, you know, what this has done is it has accelerated, in my mind, where we were going anyway in the mm. you know, working was coming in uh, my wife works for a local council she was never allowed to work from home now she works from home and they were going oh we just noticed when people work from home they seem to log on a little bit earlier because they're not traveling and they're logging off a little bit later because they're not traveling um and they're doing a little bit of the weekend and we're not paying them anymore yeah, so, yeah. no no you're not you're not yeah, gonna, um yeah this working from home malarkey this, this there could be something in this why didn't anyone think of it sooner so actually that, you know if i owned a big office block i might be panicking a little bit because um i don't um <laughs> the, the people are going to start saying actually yeah remote working could be a little bit more um, we need to make that more available to our staff uh, a number of people i live sort of on the outskirts of london and they're sort of saying i don't want to go into london every day anymore there's a lot of people there commuting in the commute home. i don't want to do that i've got used to not doing it i'm still working and so i think that what we're seeing is a number of companies who are who put their sticking plaster up with their, their VPN licenses hanging off their firewalls, you know, some of them which are probably sitting there with steam coming out of them because they go, whoa, we don't want to work this hard. Um, we're not used to 200 people connecting through us on a VPN. Uh, you know, we're seeing a couple of things. One is people are sort of looking at our um, secure remote access solutions, which gives you that next level of remote access security. So it's looking at posture checking. So if I'm logging in with my laptop, I can set policies, say, is it a corporate device? If that's my policy, and it's a corporate device, it's not coming on the network. But you could set it to say, has it got up-to-date Windows patches? Has it got Adobe patches in it? Has it got antivirus on it? And things like that. So you're starting to have a little bit more control about who's who's logging in and what they're logging in on um, onto that centralized data. Um, obviously, by offloading it off the firewall, you get more throughput and, and what have you, and, and potentially more stable B, VPN solutions. And you know, we have client there's client solutions for that. Um, but we're really seeing that that next wave of this needs to become a permanent feature. So it's not the sticking plaster we put on was great while it did, and thanks everyone for getting us working. But now we need to look at what we're going to do next. Mm. And then once put to the remote access piece then they're looking at what they've got on on the client itself what what um antivirus software are they running um and again we've got an endpoint solution which is not your traditional antivirus it's not signature based it's it's based on a product called sentinel one um so you have that sort of layered approach if you like that we talked about right at the beginning two different vendors sonic all on the firewall or, or the remote access solution and sentinel one surrounded by sonic wall on the endpoint so you've got a single point of glass to look at and 
to manage it and everything else, but we've got a separate vendor in there. And that's, again, looking at the behavior of malware. It's looking at how files are behaving rather than that list, which has got to be updated. So it's really, really light on the endpoint. And it's got features on there like rollback. So if you do get a ransomware attack, plugged in something on a USB stick or whatever it might be, it will roll back using window shadow copy, it hardens that, and it can roll it back to a point where there's no ransomware. And you, know, you can see a live demo of them. I think you can have a look on YouTube for it. Three minutes or so, you go from being hit by ransomware to carry on working. It's, it's a pretty um, a neat trick, if you like. Um, and, and that's the kind of thing that the people are looking at because I saw a report, which is something which took me a little bit by surprise, around behavior of people working from home. And the number of people that they were interviewed that pretty much said, yeah, when they're working from home, they don't take security quite so seriously because no one's looking over their shoulders to see if they put in a complicated password or they're using the password for Tesco's as they are for their corporate login, this, that, and the other. And, and they admitted to it in, in this survey, and it was a huge number of people. So actually, there needs to be a little bit more, people need to get a little bit tighter potentially on security if this remote working is, is where we're going to be ending up. So having that ability to um, be a bit more confident that you've got solid endpoint security, and again, back to your single pane of glass management, then that, that sort of wraps it up nicely. And the other feature we literally just released on there is, um, is content filtering. So you can have the same content filtering. So when your staff are logged on, they have the same rules as if they're in the office. And you can have it set for the office hours or whatever. So they can't be sitting there. If you, because if you say you can't look at, I don't know, Facebook in the office, why should you be able to look at Facebook on your corporate machine because you're at home? So we can then start applying those policies um, and, again, making the home working experience more, more similar to the office. Mm. So, I mean, I, I think in summary, you could say that, you know, the whole new world, the new normal, as we call it, is something that, that Sonic will were set up for before. Um, and, and that's why I sort of said, you know, it advanced everything a few years. We, we'd already got this centralized platform. We'd already got the cloud solutions and the on-premise solutions and the endpoint solutions, the remote access solutions. Um, all tied together with the central management and say our, our sort of key pillars of our, our business that we, we see are mm. in the unknown, unified visibility and control and, and disruptive economics. Because, you know, let's be honest, at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff comes down to cost. Um, and, you know, we can hand on heart say we've got various pricing models. We have you know, monthly billing options for, for a number of our software products, um, soon to be all of our software products. So you can buy our um, <clears throat> virtual firewalls on a monthly basis with a monthly commitment. Um, so we've got that sort of disruptive model um, around economics. We're challenging the, 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 the normal, if you like, with how you buy stuff. Um, and couple that in, say, with our, our central management platform and, and our ability to know this unknown stuff. So, yeah, we do the 99% really well that we've always done. We do the 1% really well <laughs> It's really the, the sort of the key of, for, for security going forward. It's from a, a, an IT administrator, an IT security professional sat in a company, we're trying to simplify things. Mm. Uh, so they've just got less to worry about because there's so much going on. You, you know, Charlie, you, you go to InfoSec back when we're allowed to go and see things, I take it? Definitely. Yeah, you walk in there, how many vendors do you see? Oh, thousands, <laughs> hundreds. Yeah. It's, just, yeah, it's, it's endless, it's, it's limitless. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Where, where, where would you start? You see people come out, I go there and you, you bump into people you've known you and, and, and end users and partners and, and they're like, where do you start? Yeah. And it's like, so exactly. Where, where do you it's start? Like it's a minefield. It's just... Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I generally tell them to start by finding a partner that knows what they're doing. So <laughs> it's a good place to start. And then look at minimizing the number of vendors um, and, and don't get carried away with the latest shiny new vendor that's just come out of Silicon Valley and this, that, and the other, because they might have some really neat tech, but do you need it? And, and actually, you know, a lot of um, those great, the, the good ones get bought very quickly and swallowed into a McAfee or into a, a Sonic wall or, or into a checkpoint. Someone will, will snap up the, the really hot ones. And actually, you need to simplify things a little bit, work with a, a good partner who knows what they're doing, um, and they will bring what you need to them, as opposed to the other way because as you say thousands and thousands of companies all telling you that you need their product 
and you'll end up doing a lot a lot of people do is just sort of putting their head in the sand and going, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, if anything, you make it worse because you just don't know who to yeah. sign up with. You just don't know who to go with because they're all offering, they all offer, or they all, they all believe they've got a niche into the market or they've got they're doing some technology that no one else is doing. But realistically, everyone's doing very similar things. It's not you're not a million miles away from you know every firewall is it has has the basics. Um, it's just kind of how you, you say how you can wrap around all the other services so that everything works together. Everything, as you said, from a single pane of glass. That's that's the beauty of everything nowadays. Is that everyone wants a simple single pane of glass view that's really easy to manage, easy to look after, and it's not going to kill the next IT guy that has to take on. It's not going to spend his whole day every day looking after it. Um, exactly, and 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 that's a you know as a business, that's our, our sort of mantra is around. You know, we're very passionate, obviously, about detecting and preventing malware attacks. That mm. has been you know one of our, our key strengths. And now we're really looking at simplifying it, reducing the amount of architecture. We just bought out some switches, some small switches. So you know, if you if you were to set up a small office tomorrow, uh, say you had a head office with some our kit and a, a cloud manager, you could send to site an access point a switch and a firewall, um, plug it in. Once you've scanned it on with a, with a mobile app and it will set zero touch deployment. As long as you've got someone there who can plug in the wires correctly and talk back, download the template and configure itself, etc. cetera. Um, you know, or it could come back to, to, to a managed service provider such as yourselves to, to do that on behalf of the customer. Yeah. Um, it's, it's simplification and, and that's what we need to be. And that's, you know, something I truly believe in, you know, is where that we need to go as a market. Um, you know, there's this huge gap in cybersecurity around what threats are out there um, and what skill sets people have and the amount of budget they've got. Um, and you can plot it on a graph and it's what we call the cyber gap. And it's like this. Um, and you look at people and you say, well, you know, why have you got this deployed or that deployed? And they come up with various um, answers. And some people will say, well, we're going to get attacked anyway. So <laughs> I, I, I generally, you know, have a similar response to you, Charlie, and I chuckle a little bit and I say, well, you don't shut your front, you don't lock your front door then. And then, what do you yeah. mean? Say, well, if I want to break into your house, I can break into your house. I put a chair through the window or a brick through the window. So unless you live in a brick house <laughs> and everything else. So, you know, some people, how, how can we be 100% secure? I said, well, 100% is never going to happen, but if you really want to be, just start by unplugging the internet. Um, and that'll get you a long way there. Yeah. <laughs> we can't business. We go, okay, so let's let's have a sensible conversation. Yeah. And then, you know, other people sort of say it's around time, and it, it, a lot of the thing is, is cost. It's not just cost in terms of I haven't got a spare bit of capex or opex or whatever it might be. It's you know it's the complexities around getting um, change windows and change controls, and I can only do one thing at a time. Mm. Some NHS guys um, around the time of one arrived. Mm -hmm. and they'd been hit and the guy and they, and they were cock a hoop and they were and why are you so happy and i've just done six months work in an afternoon just turning on services on firewalls and suddenly they were like do what you need to do just go and get it done and they could get it done because they didn't have to fill in hundreds of forms and do each form then wait for another six six weeks or whatever for the next change window yeah, yeah. wow and, you know but if you can simplify that down and actually yeah when that change window comes around or that it's I'll press the button and that's going to update everything mm. or a load of it. Then that suddenly helps it help people reach that that where they need to be um, on that that cyber security gap because the gap's not going to get smaller. Um, you know we I think it's well publicised in the UK. There's a skill shortage in, in cyber security, um, and that's why you need to have vendors like Sonic Wall pushing to do the hard work and, and work in partnership with. with with obviously up friends like you at Quoll to do the, the, the donkey work so a legal firm can be a legal firm. Yeah. And you know, you and me, we, we would get very bored reading a legal document. We don't understand it. But let legal firms do that and let, let IT firms look after the IT. But we need to make it easy and understand them effectively just to be able to then pull a report in the month going, this is what your security did for you. Mm. This is what it blocked. This is what it did. This is that. This is what your exposure levels are like. Um, <clears throat> And they go, great, thanks, see you next month or whatever. Um, and they can carry on being, and, that, and that's the world, the utopia, if you like, where I, I think you need to get to. Yeah, it's like, we, 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 I mean, um, our MSP team at Quoll, that's all, that's kind of our, um, one of our ethos is that, you know, let us do the hard work for you so you can carry on doing what you, your job, your company does 
don't worry about your company doing IT work. That's what we, that's the whole point of me and my team here is that we can help you guys sort out your IT stuff so that you can carry on selling whatever you sell or providing whatever service you provide and not worrying about IT. Because not nine times yeah. no one wants to worry about IT. Everyone hates talking about IT. Um, yeah, yeah, I love yeah, yeah. IT. What do you do? I've been doing. No one asks you what you do at a party and you say IT. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we must have waffled on for far too yeah, long. Mate. No, no, um, no, no, no. That's that's been um, that's been real good insight. Um, and yeah, as you as you as you, you perfectly said, um, if not once, if not twice, um, it's all about kind of cyber security and getting your kind of stuff up to date and making sure you've got the right services, the right hardware, and the right people dealing with it yeah. so that they can um, protect your business and protect kind of if it's not your physical stuff, it's your cloud stuff. Um, and yeah. that's what Sonic All can do. Um, and we, we at Qual can help people in, get in touch with us, Sonic Wall, and put those partnerships together and build on those um, foundations so that we can provide the best security and cyber security and make sure that people are protected, um, even if they are VPNing in, working from home, working in the office, or in the cloud. So it's kind of um, the best of all. We can kind of do everything. Um, and with your help, Ed. Absolutely. Well, so we, we have plenty of people eager to, to assist and, and say we can we can make life simple. And you know, my, my final piece of advice as I sign off, if you don't want to do anything else, just please patch, patch, patch. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, <laughs> that's Tuesday. It was a good day, but <laughs> no, as long as you've got your stuff up to date, um, updated, it's always great. Um, and yeah, as Ed said, um, guys, make sure you patch. Um, get in contact with us at Quell if you've got any questions, if you want to chat about anything um I'll, i'm here with my whole team um we can all talk about whatever you've got to ask if you've got any questions about security cyber security patching you name it we can talk about it we can discuss it and um we can let you know more great stuff thanks charlie thanks everyone no, see you next. Bye, guys see you later be safe